Why, if Hillary Clinton is leading her opponents by huge margins across the country, are we so focused on this one state of Iowa? Well, as you know, Iowa goes first in this madness that is the presidential nomination process, and what happens there may cause great ripple effects on what happens in the states that follow. On the Democratic side, it is clearly the state in which the candidates are most heavily investing their time and resources and where the campaign is most engaged. And it's because of that engagement that the state of play looks quite different there than it does nationally. Take a look at the latest ABC News Washington Post poll numbers coming out of Iowa in the Democratic contest. Barack Obama on top there with 30% of the vote. Clinton in second place there at 26% and Edwards down in third at 22%. Of course, all of this is within uh, the margin of error to some degree. Uh, Clinton has sort of stayed exactly where she was in our July poll. Barack Obama up about four points or three points and John Edwards down about four points, but it is still clearly a very close race. Rick, before we delve inside these numbers, what do you make of that top line horse race figure that tends to drive so much of the media coverage? Well, as the Obama campaign put it, we're going to have a caucus and not a coronation. I think the key thing here is movement among the candidates. Barack Obama up a few points since the last poll. Hillary Clinton exactly steady from the last time that we went out in the field. And and John Edwards dropping a bit. But really what we're seeing now is, is a two-way tie, essentially, for first place and a three-way dogfight in the Iowa caucuses. And then who knows about everyone that's, that's lower in the field, as we know from four years ago. John Kerry showed us that uh, people can surprise us in Iowa by coming on late. Want to bring in now now one of the top political reporters in Iowa, Kay Henderson of Radio Iowa. Kay, thanks for joining us. Good to do so. Uh, I, I want to get your reaction to this to this poll number. We take a look at one of the aspects of our poll here. Uh, we asked Democratic voters what they wanted in the next president, and 55% said they preferred a new direction versus 33% for strength and experience. That would seem to to bode fairly well for Barack Obama. Kay, you're on the ground. What are you hearing from Democratic activists in terms of what they want to see in their nominee? Well, what I've been hearing from activists for a long time is that they want to move beyond the Clinton years among those folks who are not supporting Hillary Clinton. It's been my view for the past couple of months that perhaps Hillary Clinton is not going to get any of the undecided voters. People know a lot about her. And so I think things are going to break for the other candidates rather than for Senator Clinton unless she can turn out undecided voters or people who haven't gone to the caucuses before. Her campaign sort of surprised us last week week by telling us that a majority of the people who say they're going to support her had never ever gone to a caucus before. That is a, a big turnout challenge right. uh, exactly. that they say in Iowa. You know, as, as Rick was just pointing out, those uh, strength and experience versus new direction and new ideas, if you go inside those, of the of the people that said that strength and experience, which is just a third of Democratic caucus goers, uh, that that is most important to them. Hillary Clinton wins them 38 percent to 19 for Edwards mm -hmm. to 12 for Obama. She does really well with that group. Of course, the 55 percent, a larger chunk, Barack Obama just walks away with that. 43 percent of those voters are for him versus 17 percent uh, for Hillary Clinton. I guess my question is, it seems to me that Hillary Clinton is starting to try to boost turnout among those strength and experience voters. She wants more of those folks to be showing up at the polls. In fact, Kay, take a listen to what Senator Clinton said on the campaign trail yesterday on this topic. But there is one job we can't afford on the job training for. That is the job of our next president. That could be the costliest job training in history. Every day spent learning the ropes is another day of rising costs, mounting deficits, and growing anxiety for our families and they cannot afford to keep waiting. We need a president who understands the magnitude and complexity of the challenges we face and has the strength and experience to address them from day one. She was, of course, talking about the economy and trying to play up her experience. Barack Obama shot immediately back with this. Give a listen. I am happy to compare my experiences to hers. Uh, when it comes to the economy. I, my understanding was that she wasn't Treasury Secretary uh, in the Clinton administration. So, Kay, can you tell me, do you have a sense, are people sort of flirting with Barack Obama right now because they really like this idea of new direction, but that we may get very close to caucus time and perhaps the stakes of the election uh, will cause strength and experience voters to be a little more vocal? 
You know, there is such a thing as Clinton fatigue, and as I've been to Barack Obama events, I've been chatting with supporters who are sitting there waiting for him to appear, and I was struck by what one woman told me about a month ago in uh, Des Moines. She said uh, that she had not been a big fan of Bill Clinton, and she wanted to move beyond the Clinton era. And so I do think that uh, Barack Obama speaks to those people who are ready to, as Obama would say, turn the page. Uh, conversely, Clinton herself is making the argument of experience, and in that very speech in Knoxville, of which your listeners just heard a little bit of, uh, she referenced her time in the White House with Bill Clinton at least 16 times in half an hour, which is very remarkable. She's really stepped up the idea that she was very involved in the Clinton administration. In fact, one of the ways that uh, she made that clear, I've lived in the White House, trying to, I I guess, present herself as the candidate that is most experienced because of her connection to Bill Clinton. And Kay, Hillary Clinton has a particular Iowa problem. I think we've said this since the beginning of the campaign. Bill Clinton never ran in the caucuses either in 1992 right. or in 1996. And an interesting comment I saw the other day from Tom Vilsack, the former governor of Iowa, one of the prominent supporters of Hillary Clinton, where he essentially said, I'm paraphrasing here, that she didn't really get what, what it means to, to have to work the caucus goers, to have to, the, the sort of personal right. contact that you need right away. Are we seeing adjustments? Have you seen differences in how the campaign is pitching itself, how Hillary Clinton is appearing on the trail as time has gone? by over the last few months? I do. Of course, the the number of events she's holding in Iowa has increased dramatically. And Clinton herself, I had a conversation about this topic uh, on November 3rd, and, and she indicated that she really didn't understand what the caucuses were not like, and now she understands that she has to persuade Iowans herself that she should be the nominee. I don't think she really got that before. I think she thought, you know, I can run some advertisements, I can have my husband go out and, and Madeleine Albright and some of these other um, prominent people who are supporting me, but then she found out that no, Iowans really want to meet you, they want to hear from you, and, and they want to take your measure in person. Okay, uh, Senator Clinton is coming off of uh, several weeks of rough news cycles, particularly in your state of Iowa. She had that rough national debate performance in Philadelphia three weeks ago where she mm -hmm. hemmed and hawed on driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. And then there was a the little flap about whether or not she tipped a waitress at a, at a diner in Iowa. And then, of course, the planted question flap, which also was an Iowa-centric story. And, and I'm, I, I'm, there are some numbers in our poll I want to show you that are starting to sort of get at uh, what that coverage may be doing to her uh, overall standing in Iowa. Take a look here on, on willing to speak his or her mind. Uh, Democrats were asked uh, if the candidates are willing to speak his or her mind. Only 50 percent of Democrats in Iowa think Senator Clinton is willing to speak her mind. That's compared to almost three-fourths for Obama or Edwards. And then look at who's the most honest and trustworthy of the candidates. Clinton is losing that battle to Barack Obama by two to one. He's at 31 percent of Democrats think he's most honest and trustworthy compared to 15 percent for Senator Clinton. How damaging are those numbers there for her? Well, I think they're reflective of what's been going on on the ground in Iowa for months. John Edwards and Barack Obama for months have been making this argument that she is not truthful. Edwards in a much harsher mode, but uh, Obama too has been making the case that we shouldn't have these old textbook campaigns, Washington style politics. Uh, Obama's been making that case ever since Labor Day, and I think that's been hammered home and hammered home, and people are finally reflecting in your polls that they're hearing that message from those two candidates. Kay, briefly, I want to ask you, all the candidates like to point out the example of John Kerry running so mm -hmm. far back in late 2003 and coming on to win the caucuses. Are any of the, the second or third tier candidates even, uh, you think, primed to have a John Kerry type of surge? Uh, Chris, Di uh, Chris, ba Chris Dodd or Joe Biden or Bill Richardson? Do, do any of them strike you as, I mean, do you, it, who's your nominee for the sleeper candidate in this race? <laughs> Well, I think Biden would like to cast himself in that role, but I'm not quite sure he is the sleeper candidate. I really think that Richardson, because of his resume, because of his easygoing style and his uh, repeated trips to the state, and the way he is engaged with Iowans, I think Richardson um, is poised to be that sleeper candidate, particularly if he increases his 
advertising message. He was nowhere to be seen in polls in the spring in Iowa, but he ran some very humorous ads and was able to put himself out there in, in the public in a way that none of the other candidates did, and he, and he really increased his exposure in Iowa and his standing in the polls. I think if he comes out with some creative ad messages in the closing days of this 